Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are covering a 2023 NFL mock draft. If you are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more NFL draft content. Now, with the season at this point, we're about to get the free agency. There's a lot that can happen with these mocks. I'm pretty excited to present this one to you. With the first overall pick, we're going to jump right into it. We have the Chicago Bears. Now, in this scenario here, we are not going, going to be making any trades, so they are going to be staying put here at number one. So where do the Bears go? There's been a lot of talk about them potentially trading Justin Fields away. There's this talk that they're going to go ahead and take a defensive lineman, whether that be Will Anderson or Jalen Carter. There's a lot of things that are unknown with Ryan Poles and what his plan is with the first overall pick. However, I think it's pretty clear and obvious if they stay here, they are likely going to go with a game changer like Will Anderson. When you think about an explosive edge, a guy that can make a ton of plays, not only he is he great at rushing the passer, he's a phenomenal run defender. The tackles for loss numbers and sack numbers speak for themselves. Therefore, Will Anderson at number one. Following that up, number two, the Houston Texans. Houston is definitely going to be taking a pathway of we need to build around a franchise quarterback. Davis Mills is not that. I, I think they got a little bit more out of Davis Mills than they had expected when they had selected him. However, I just think that he is going to hold this franchise back if that's who they're trying to build around. Bryce Young is going to be the pick in my eyes. There's a lot of steam right now for guys like Will Levis and C.J. Stroud to be the first quarterback selected. I just think at the end of the day, Bryce Young, in terms of his intangibles and what, what he brings to the table as a leader, there's a lot of great qualities for Bryce Young. I think at number two, it makes a lot of sense for the Houston Texans to go there. That's where I think they will end up choosing. At number three, we have the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Arizona Cardinals are in a position here where I believe that they have to continue to build up this defense. Jalen Carter is a guy that does not get enough love in the pre-draft process here with how game-breaking he is along that defensive line, especially on the interior. He is going to wreak havoc upon opposing offenses. He's going to have some good sack numbers. I, I think his overall impact is going to be good because they're going to have to send some doubles at him for sure with how big of a guy he is, how well he moves. He is the exact guy you want in the middle of that defensive line. He's going to be an absolute problem for opposing offenses. Jalen Carter is a big-time prospect, literally, and he is going to be a phenomenal fit with Arizona. Now at number four, we have the Indianapolis Colts. I think this is a position where you have to consider them as obvious quarterbacks landing spot. I, I think it's it's written out already. It's going to be a quarterback. It's a matter of who who's available, who falls. To me, I think this is a Will, Will Levis landing spot. Now, I people are going to argue this because they're going to say C.J. Stroud is the better prospect that we've seen at the collegiate level, but I think the Colts are going to look at the overall upside of Will Levis, who's got the bigger arm, who's the better athlete. There's a couple of those things that aren't teachable to a guy like C.J. Stroud. I just think that they're going to value that upside over what Stroud has to offer currently. Now, is that the right selection? I don't know. I, I don't know if that's for sure the correct selection because Will Levis did not look nearly as good as C.J. Stroud at the collegiate level. This is more about pro uh, projectables, intangibles, and that's exactly what Will Levis has to offer in terms of his uh, physical skill set. Uh, it's it's pretty off the ch off the charts in terms of his overall athleticism, his arm. There's a lot to love about the collective package that you get with a guy like Will Levis. At number five, we have the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks, to me, are going to be considering the defensive side of the ball. A player that people are a little bit lower on now than they were previously, to me, uh, is, is a guy by the name of Miles Murphy. If you remember... A lot of mocks. Uh, he he was going in that top five range. I think he has that ability. I think he has that athleticism and strength. He's a very very good edge. You know, overall, I think he is the exact kind of guy that Seattle would be looking for. I know they have Shelby Harris and, and Puna Ford, but I think Miles Murphy is a a, a big upgrade uh, for sure. I, I think Miles Murphy is a really great prospect. He's fun to watch, and I think he's going to embody what Seattle's looking for defensively in that scheme. At number six, we have the Detroit Lions, and the Detroit Lions have a lot of great options to, to kind of, you know, kind of play with at this point. Uh, you know, Devin Witherspoon is a guy that I've been talking about a lot in the pre-draft process, and he's finally starting to get some recognition. 
Uh, he was my favorite corner uh, throughout this process so far. And I had mentioned that in my other videos, but when you look at what Devin Witherspoon has to offer, he's extremely fun. He, he's a guy with good ball skills, really good man to man guy, good at the press. He is exactly what Detroit needs in terms of some physicality on the back end. Devin Witherspoon as a, a good knack for just playing football. He, he just understands where to be in the zone concepts. A good man guy, like I had previously stated. Devin Witherspoon is exactly where Detroit needs to be. They need to continue to build up this defense. They had an awesome offense last year, but defensively, they had some deficiencies. They're trying to address that. They did that with Aiden Hutchinson, which was a, an awesome selection and cannot be stated how great that was. They ended up getting him too instead of you know a guy like Trayvon Walker, who ended up being uh, less than spectacular. Let's just put it that way. So uh, Witherspoon there at six makes a lot of sense. At number seven, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. To me, quarterback landing spot, obviously. C.J. Stroud, I accidentally clicked into his profile, but there he goes. At number seven, they fill a big need at the quarterback position. Derek Carr's gone as a new regime in terms of, you know, or I shouldn't say it's not it's not a new regime. It's a new turnover in terms of what this team's going to look like. Uh, offensively, they're going to establish a new identi identity. Uh, and C.J. Stroud is going to be their new build-around quarterback. I think it's really fun for Raiders fans, getting a little bit of a changeup from Derek Carr, who had a, a pretty nice career with the Raiders. Let's not get that twisted, but I think a change of scenery was uh, much needed for all parties involved. At number eight, we had the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons, to me, I, I don't think they necessarily go quarterback this year. I, I, I think that's kind of something that people are expecting. I think they're going to look once again at that wide receiver position and Quentin Johnston. You look at a guy like they had taken last year in Drake London, Worked out beautifully. He's going to be a very awesome receiver in the NFL. I think they're going to take another big body guy, but a guy that is a little different in terms of play style. Uh, Quentin Johnson is a pretty technical route runner, despite him having that 6'4 frame. He's not as much of a high point football catcher as one would expect with that frame. But when you actually look at his route tree and you know his ability to be a technician, I think it's, it's a clear and obvious choice for the Atlanta Falcons to pair up another really good receiver. I think they're going to give Desmond Ritter the full year. There was a reason they had selected him when they did. I, th I felt like they were trying to put themselves in a position to ride with Desmond Ritter this upcoming season. Now, I very well could be wrong in that notion. However, I think that's just kind of what they were trying to set up for. At number nine, we have the Carolina Panthers. And the Carolina Panthers, they, they had a lot of quarterback issues throughout the course of last season. And I think it's it's pretty clear to me, Anthony Richardson is going to be the pick. When you look at the the actual 6-4 frame that he brings to the table, his athleticism, his big-time arm, all that collectively is speaking to a guy that has an incredibly high ceiling. We saw some of the very low points at Florida this past season. However, I'm going to look past some of that, and I think Carolina will too, because some of the best quarterback prospects we've seen over the last couple of years that had some glaring issues at the collegiate level, Lamar Jackson, Justin Herbert, uh, Josh Allen, those players had some awesome upside, uh, had some very, very, you know, bad, some some really bad tape to be completely transparent. Anthony Richardson's got that, but he's also got the, the potential upside to be an awesome caliber NFL quarterback. At number 10, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, you have to consider where this team's at in terms of a long-term future. Tyree Wilson, to me, makes a lot of sense uh, at the edge spot. And when you look at his lower lower half, powerful edge rusher, a guy that could put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. This is a nice formula for them because they continue to invest. Howie Roseman's done a great job of this offensive line and defensive line. He's been winning in the trenches, uh, you know, his entire time as the general manager. And I think to me, uh, Tyree Wilson is going to fit in perfectly with what they're trying to do defensively. Uh, they, they got a couple of guys, as you already know, that are getting up there in age uh, contract situations are murky. And I think Tyree Wilson fits the bill. At number 11, we have the Tennessee Titans. And the Tennessee Titans have done a pretty good job in terms of being consistent under, under Mike Vrabel. Now, what they're lacking a little bit is some explosiveness, especially at that wide receiver position. Uh, when, when you look at Traylon Burks isn't super explosive, but a guy that is Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is going to continue to build up hype. He was sought after of being a second or third round guy, he has catapulted himself all the way up into the top 15 conversation. When you put on the film from him at Boston College, this guy is electric. Super elusive, 
super uh super gritty in terms of you know him trying to pick up extra yards Zay Flowers is a nice collective package that you're going to get at the receiver spot. Number 12, we have the Houston Texans once again. And with Houston, I think there's a major urgency to look at the wide receiver position. To me, Jackson Smith and Jigba is the guy you want to be looking for. Uh, a player that was primarily a slot wide receiver, but what he brings to the table, he, he was unguardable. Not this past season, but the season prior I, I think when you looked at his film, you look at everything that he brings to the table in terms of how good of a route runner he is, his ability to actually just catch passes, got good hands. Jackson Smith and Jigba is a nice package. Sure, he's not going to be you know playing a ton on the outside, but what he offers from the slot is incredible. They're going to be definitely uh, looking to throw the ball his way a ton. And I think this is a great thing for the Texans. They have to get a little more explosive, and I think this is the perfect player to do so. At number 13, we have the New York Jets. And the New York Jets are very likely going to be looking at tackle in this upcoming draft. And to me, when you look at all the tackles, probably the, the top two are, are obviously uh, Paris Johnson Jr. and Peter Skronsky. I firmly believe that those two are awesome pass blockers. And it's going to be super critical for uh, the Jets to be able to pass block. Now, I, I know a lot of people are going to meme them and say, you know, Zach Wilson's not going to be throwing the ball a ton. They're going to just be running it. But at the end of the day, I think when you're trying to look at setting up for future long-term success, it is a passing league. You need some guys that are really swift on their feet and ability to pass block. Peter Skaronsky is going to be the pick here. New York Jets are getting a tackle. Joe Douglas has invested in offensive line before. Think Mikai Becton. Think AVT. All of those guys are exactly what Joe Douglas are looking for. I think Peter Skaronsky is an awesome case here to be selected by the Jets. Now at number 14. We have the New England Patriots. And with the New England Patriots, uh, you know, I, I think it's kind of a toss-up in, in terms of where the teams have preference. I think Paris Johnson Jr. is the guy here. Uh, he was great. I was the pa best pass blocker in the entire nation, uh, rightfully so, at the tackle spot. He was awesome this this past season for, for Ohio State. I love this pick for them. I think New England's going to be looking to improve that offensive line that uh, definitely needs it. Number 15, now we have the Green Bay Packers. And I think when you look at the Packers, it's kind of the same case of they need to continue to invest in wide receiver. Alan Lazard potentially out the door this offseason. It's very likely he does not return. There's going to be a lot of changes in Green Bay. One thing that they need to continue to stay on is getting another wide receiver. Jordan Addison, the transfer from Pitt going to USC, had a lot of success with Caleb Williams. And I think that the top Caleb Williams target is going to be an awesome target for Jordan Love or whoever is the quarterback of Green Bay, who knows that maybe maybe Aaron Rodgers comes back. But at, at the end of the day, I think they need another guy. You know, I, I think when you look at uh, what Christian Watson was able to do for that offense in terms of uh, bringing some explosive plays, I think you're going to find a guy that's really consistent in terms of his route running, his route tree. All of those things are going to be a nice mesh for this Green Bay offense. He's a little more technical than a guy like Christian Watson. So Jordan Addison here, to me, makes a lot of sense. Now at number 16, we have the Commanders. And I think when you kind of look at the Commanders, holistically speaking, there, there's a couple of holes. And I, I think it's pretty obvious that they, they've they needed to address that guard spot ever since the departure of Brandon Sheriff. And I think there's there's a guy that you can definitely plug and play, and, and he can be potentially a Pro Bowl level guard, Osiris Torrance. With his size, his athleticism, he's going to be a great pulling, pulling guard at that next level. And to me, Washington... Um, does very well here. They need interior offensive line. It's been pretty pretty obvious when you go all the way back to last season, had a lot of pressure up the middle, and I think that uh, they are not going to hesitate to pull the trigger for an interior offensive lineman, whether that be in their first pick or a couple of picks later. I, I, I'm not exactly sure their, dra their draft plan at this juncture. Maybe they look at linebacker, but I, I'm a little more confident in the offensive line selection. Pittsburgh at 17. Pittsburgh had a lot of issues along that offensive line. And I, I don't think anything's going to change unless they, they do something about it here. Broderick Jones. Broderick Jones, big physical specimen coming out of Georgia. Super, uh, a super great fit for what Pittsburgh's trying to do here. In my opinion, they have to get better up front. I think they're going to continue to use uh, not only that selection, but maybe their second round pick on another offensive line, maybe they look on the interior. Pittsburgh's got to be better up front. 
Mike Tomlin is not going to accept the offensive line that he had last year. Uh, They're going to pound their fists on the table for a better O-line moving forward. Number 18, we have the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions are going to be looking, in my opinion, for some interior help. And the reason I say that is Detroit's got a, they got a really good defense in terms of some of their guys with upside. Now, it didn't translate this past year. They're one of the worst defenses in the NFL, but in terms of their younger players that they can put together with this draft. Now, so I, I want to be clear with the guys they can add in this draft, this could be a nice young defense. Last year, they were bad. This year, they can do a lot of different things. I think Brian Brzee, Brian Brzee, a player that was thought to be a top five level selection, his athleticism and his measurables are not going to suggest he should be in that top 10 realm. He plays super hard. He's a guy that's an awesome, awesome run stuffer, one of the best in the entire class. Detroit struggled, you know, stopping the run last season. And that's why Brian Brzee is going to be a huge impact player for Dan Campbell. He's exactly what Dan Campbell is kind of looking for in a defensive lineman in terms of his toughness and his ability to stop the run. Now Tampa Bay is left in a, a, a peculiar position, in my opinion. When you look at what this team has to do, there's a lot. There's a lot with, with Tom Brady being gone. They need a quarterback. It's clear. It's very clear. And when I'm kind of looking at the QBs here, I, I just don't love Tanner McKee here. I don't love Hendon Hooker at this spot. To me, I think they have to look to build outside of that position. So when you kind of look collectively speaking here, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, two guys that are very worthy of going in the first round here. I just think Michael Mayer is a great fit for this team. They need a tight end. They've needed one now for a couple of seasons. Michael Mayer, uh, his athleticism, his catch radius, all of those things being brought to the table are going to be huge for this Tampa Bay offense, whoever the next quarterback is. Following that up is pick number 20. We got the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle is in another position where they're getting some awesome value at this spot. To me, Christian Gonzalez going to Seattle's dangerous with his his height, his length, athleticism. He's the, the total package at the cornerback position, and I think they're getting an absolute steal here at 20. Now at 21, we have the LA Chargers. I think they're going to be looking for a, another receiver in the mix. You know, DeAndre Carter, they tried riding last year. I think Josh Downs is one that's going to fit in perfectly Probably one of the more underrated players in the entire draft. He is super quick, super fast, super elusive, and one of those receivers that can be an impact guy in case Mike Williams goes down, Keenan Allen goes down. Those guys are a little more prone to injury than others. Seemingly, uh, they're not able to stay on the field together. They need another wide receiver in the event that happens. And plus, even if they if they are still in the lineup both at the same time, Josh Downs is a seamless fit into that offense. 22, we have the Baltimore Ravens. Now, with the Baltimore Ravens, there, there's a lot of different ways that can look. I, I think wide receiver probably is the favorite in terms of you know what they actually need, but Baltimore likes to draft based off of value. Brian Branch is still available. Brian Branch is a terrific safety from Alabama. Rangy safety, can get in the box, make tackles, and also uh, can play play the football well. So overall, that, that collective thing screams Baltimore to me. When you look at the, the prototype guys that they're looking for, Brian Branch is a definite fit for this team. With the Minnesota Vikings being here, there's 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 a lot to look at on defense. The the worst defense in the entire NFL last year. They were opportunistic. However, they they got a lot of work to do. Positive news: Andrew Booth is coming back from injury. Uh, and you look at Lewis Seen, another guy coming back from injury. This team has some potential defensively, especially with Brian Flores as, as the D coordinator now. To me, it makes a lot of sense. There, there's going to be some moving parts here. I think when you consider where they're at, Joey Porter Jr. makes a lot of sense. At the cornerback position, there's a lot of question marks of Caleb Evans, uh, Andrew Booth Jr., Patrick Peterson being in the mix, but there, there's some uncertainty with Pat Pete at this point. So I think they will end up going corner. I think there is a, a consideration there, Lucas Van Ness, uh, but I, I don't see them superseding him and, you know, and taking him over a guy like Joey Porter Jr. Pick 24, Jacksonville. Jacksonville, a, a massive need at the cornerback position. I also think at wide receiver, you, you could have some consideration. Zay Jones and Christian Kirk were really good this past season. They were they were phenomenal. Have a need for another wide out, but let's not forget, once again, Kelvin Ridley is adding into the mix. Therefore, they should be good to go. Hypothetically, uh, you know, he's reinstated and everything. 
he should be good to go. They don't need a wide out anymore like they had previously needed. Uh, at this point, uh, I think you have to look in that secondary. To me, you have to do it, have to do it, have to do it. They're going to have to cut um, you know, Shaquille Griffin. Therefore, opening up the door for another player. I, I to me, you know, I, I get I get it. People have been dropping Kele Ringo down on boards a ton, but we have to consider his measurables. We have to consider his height, uh, in term his straight line speed, his ability to track down a ball. Kele Ringo is a first round level player, in my opinion, at this point, my evaluation, and I think that is going to remain true here for Jacksonville. Kele Ringo gets a good athlete with good size, and he can play corner. That that's just a sheer fact of the matter. 25, we have the New York Giants. Now, the New York Giants are in a position here. They have to go and get a playmaker. Have to. Absolutely need to. To me, you're looking at Keishon Boutte and Jalen Hyatt. I think Keishon Boutte is a better player, to be completely transparent. Jalen Hyatt is an absolute burner, and he's going to take the top off of defense. But when I look at the overall skill set that Keishon Boutte possesses, was thought to be a, a potential top five pick in this upcoming draft uh, preseason. Ends up falling now to, is he a second round guy? I think he's a first round level talent. And Keishan Butte, awesome route runner. Uh, questionable, I, I guess you could say, concentration drops this year. I, I just don't think it was really, the, the hands are not the issue. I, I think he just had some issue. I, I don't know. They, they just were not able to mesh uh, with Jaden Daniels and him. So, to me, Keishan Butte makes sense at 25. 26, we have the Dallas Cowboys. And with the Dallas Cowboys, this is a team that that, that is tough. I, I think Kalaja Kansi is going to fit in perfectly. They're going to look at, once again, add to that defense that's already super talented. But uh, Kalaja Kansi out of Pittsburgh is an absolute beast in the middle of a defense. Dallas is in a good spot here. They 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 have a good good roster still. And I think they can right some of the wrongs here. Uh, they, they definitely could have considered wide receiver. I mean, maybe Jalen Hyatt would have been a fit there. But uh, Kalaja Kansi on the interior is going to be uh, really awesome to watch with the collective defensive unit that they already have. 27, this has been my favorite pick to, to mock, and that's Bijan Robinson of the Bills. And I look at Bijan Robinson, he, he forced 104 missed tackles this past season. That is absurd. The most amongst all running backs, this guy's for real. He's going to be a game changer for this Bills offense. 28, we have uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. And when you consider the Bengals, there, there's a, a need that pretty much exceeds all other needs, in my opinion. Offensive tackle, Anton Harrison was consistent out at Oklahoma this year. He's going to be a, a pass blocking improvement. He's going to be really good in the run game for Joe Mixon. To me, Cincinnati has to make sure they address the O-line in round one. At 29, we have the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans is going to go off of value, in my opinion. Now, is this something that they necessarily need? No, but Lucas Van Ness is too talented to pass up at this point. They go ahead and get him at 29. Uh, now, with the next selection here, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. And with the Philadelphia Eagles, previously they had taken Tyree Wilson. I think along that interior, that offensive line, there are going to be some spots where you can improve. Um, maybe Steve Avila could make some sense. I'm also, you know, trying to consider at the safety spot where else they could look. I think Antonio Johnson is going to be an awesome fit for the Eagles. Super talented safety, makes a lot of plays on the back end, and Philadelphia is, is going to continue to stay scary. IMO. 31, we have the Kansas City Chiefs and the Kansas City Chiefs. There, there's a lot of different things they can do here. Uh, I, I, I'm scared to do it, but they could consider wide receiver once again, and this fits their exact prototype. This is what I'd be super scared of if I were any NFL fan, because if there's a team that can utilize this guy, it is KC. Jalen Hyatt, the absolute burner. I mean, it, it's scary. He's got straight line speed that is almost unmatched in the class. Uh, holistically speaking, th this could be kind of scary for, for all of us NFL fans to, to, to try to watch KC add a guy like Jalen Hyatt at this pick. It would be terrifying. So when you look at the, the, the collective draft here, I love what we were able to do for some of these teams. I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, there, there's a couple of players that were close and borderline for, for my first round. And, you know, I'm not going to always can stay in the consensus where the media is at with some of these things because 
Keele Ringo, I feel, is still a first-round level guy. I'm going to rewatch the tape on him, but to me, I see first-round level player. There's a lot of lot of a lot of talent defensively in this class, especially at that corner spot. And I'm excited to see how that shakes out. Thanks again for stopping by. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel. Appreciate all the support that we've had over you know the entire time of YouTube here. It's been a lot of fun. Let me know in the comment section below who is your favorite prospect, and we'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.